Hey crafty friends and happy Sunday to you. It's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and in this week's new episode of Christ in Crafting we are going to talk about it, what it means to be wonderfully and fearfully created uh, because that is how God made each one of us. And I have a really fun project that mostly involves Dollar Tree flowers. So I have a whole tub I never throw anything away. I don't know if you're like me, but I have a whole tub that has little bits and pieces of various faux flowers that I've purchased over the last several years. And um, I dug out a lot of them that are small in scale. We're gonna be using these, a variety of colors. We're gonna be using this. I don't wanna give you too much of a peek, but here it is. We're gonna be doing working with this. It is a magnetic. Um, hanging banner. Um, we're also going to work with this, which is a pennant banner. We're going to be working with this awesome stencil that says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139 14. And I have a bunch of other Bible verses to share with you. So it should be really good as you're hopping on. Say hello. I see people jumping on already. Feel free to ask questions along the way. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. Um, and if you or anyone you know has ever felt a little less than, uh, less than whatever, I think today's um, project and what I have to tell you are going to be encouraging. So let's jump right in. Okay, so the ingredients for this project are, like I said, just a variety of little florals. You can get these everywhere. These mostly came from Dollar Tree. Um, and like, <laughs> I've slowly been picking them apart, but I just hang on to them because you never know when you're going to have another project that you'll need them for. I did check to make sure that the scale was right though. I'm not mixing a big flower like this in with these because then it looks, uh, the scale looks wrong. So it's gonna involve this, uh, a whole bunch of hot glue. And I'm gonna show you how to take these flowers apart and how to reassemble them so they look pretty decent. So let's jump right in. Um, I am gonna be using some Magnolia DIY.com surfaces. And I wanted to let you know that they have these awesome pennant banners. They come in a variety of sizes. They have the little wood thing that holds it together. They, it even comes with a string. We're also going to use this, which it's a magnetic hanging banner. It also comes in a variety of sizes. And just this last week, they introduced refills. So you can use the same bones, uh, which are great and switch the banner out throughout the year. Um, I love that idea. So that's what we're gonna be using, but I'm gonna start on this one. And we're using this brand new stencil that of course I labeled the back of it so I know which side to put it on. I've already used it twice. I'm not going to fuzz it because I'm using it on fabric. Uh, but if you're wondering what is fuzzing and what is she talking about, a lot of these green stencils from Magnolia are super sticky. And so it's good to fuzz them a little bit using something like this tacky towel that you can get from magnoliadiy.com or a t-shirt, a pair of jeans, something like that. And you just lay your stencil, especially when it's brand new, down on your not super linty uh, fabric and press it down a couple times and it makes it easier to get your stencil up when you're all finished. Okay, so I'm going to just lay this on here and press it down. Um, tell me in the comments if you've ever worked with these awesome stencils from Magnolia. I'd love to know who's done that. And if you like them, I love them. <laughs> because I don't have a lot of artistic abilities. I am crafty and I am creative, but I'm not artistic, so. Well, hey, Dixie Smith, how are you doing, Fred? And I see Karen's on, and Joy. Lots of people are hopping on. Okay, so since this is fabric, I'm gonna use ink from Magnolia, and I'm just using some basic black. 
I'm going to uh, create this and I'm going to give you an idea for it. And then we're going to finish up this other one. And then we're going to go in the Bible. I have a bunch of great verses to share with you. And it should be good. Okay, so I'm just grabbing some ink with my squeegee. And I, I mean, this is where, like, if you're not artistic, but you could push a squeegee around a stencil like I'm doing right now, then these stencils would be great for you. Okay, let's get some more. I can never estimate how much I'm going to need, but really they don't, they don't take a ton of medium, which is great. And I'm going to resist the urge to keep going over and over and over it. I'm going to just get everything covered. I'm going to pull up the big globs. And then I'm going to stop. And I'll tell you about heat setting. Because when you're working with ink, you can use, you can make t-shirts, tea towels, totes, pillows, all kinds of things using ink that are washable. Seriously. I mean, it's so cool. And um, all you have to do is apply your ink on your stencil, let it thoroughly dry, and um, then you can use a hot iron uh, with a piece of parchment paper over the top. I usually set my iron at about cotton, and you're going to go, oh gosh, <laughs> you're going to go over it for three or four minutes, and um, then it'll be heat set and permanent. Gosh, that was a good save. This is such a pretty stencil. And I love all the Bible verse stuff that Magnolia has. Oh my gosh. That is what initially drew me to this, um, to represent Magnolia in some of my videos, is um, just everything faith related, which is what I totally love. Look how beautiful that is. Even if we didn't do another thing to it, it's lovely, but here's one idea. We're not gonna do this today, but I just wanna share it with you. You can dilute some ink. They have a color called Sangria. They have a, a fuchsia pink. They have like a purpley color. They have a yellow color. And then to me, when you look at these flowers right here, they kind of remind me of pansies. So then you can actually paint in the flowers using some diluted, just water uh, and ink, and you could paint in the bottom part. Or you could do this in different colors, like do all of the flowers purple and then do the leaves green and do everything else in black or do some of the words in another color. So there's tons of options. But anyways, I just wanted to do that to show you how quick and easy it was. And yesterday, I did the same thing to get ready for today. I stenciled this banner. And it's going to be a magnetic hanging banner. I stenciled it and I started playing around with it. So I'm going to show you that in just a second. But what I want to tell you about this is that there are multiple sizes. This one is 12 by 18, roughly. And um, they have refills now, which are great. And they come with the magnetic click sticks, top and bottom. You can paint these, stain them, or leave them natural. And you can reuse them over and over and over again. So these banners can be adjusted the size. And I'm going to get a pencil. Okay, and I'm going to just cut off part of the top. Um, okay, so I'm just going to trace this. I can trim it if it's not, not good and straight, but I do love how these are customizable. 
And this part is going to be hidden because it will be in between the two magnetic click sticks. Okay? I'm just going to toss that. I don't know. I might come back and retrieve it later if I can find something to do with it. Okay, so let's put our click sticks on. The top one comes with the hanger, and this is meant to be the back stick, where you can see where the little hanger things are. I put a little dab of glue in each one of those so that it wouldn't uh, be falling off while I was trying to put it on, and then it has the front. Super easy, and let's put the bottom on. I did not trim the bottom, but you could if you wanted. Uh, if you've been watching DIY Dreaming for very long, you might remember when we tried to make our own click sticks using painter's stir sticks, paint stir sticks, and big magnets. They were mediocre. <laughs> this is really the best option, so let's have fun. Okay, I'm going to show you how to take the flowers apart, and then we're going to reassemble them. And you know what? I'm going to turn my ring light on, and I'm going to move this back just a little bit. Okay. All right, so I've already started attaching some of the flowers. The first thing I did was the leaves. And to do the leaves, I just found a leaf on, a, on one of these little floral picks from Dollar Tree that I thought was reasonable. I mean, not, their leaves are not great. So if you have other florals around, that is better. So I've just pulled it off. And then you can cut it absolutely whatever size you want. And most of it's going to be covered up. So except for the little tip, you wouldn't see very much. And then I just glued those on. So I'm going to continue to pull this off. So I'm just going to take it off. All right. To do the flowers, um, those of you who are... Uh, really good with florals, with wreaths and that kind of thing, then I'm sure you're way more experienced than I am because I'm not super great with that kind of stuff. But, uh, good paper plate that's going to work. But what you're going to do is you're going to start out by taking the, um, the floral that you want to use off. And most of the time, you can just pull it and it's, like a little hole and it's going to go over uh, one of these um, floral pick things. And then most of the time, especially with Dollar Tree flowers, you can just pull the flower right off. So let's pull those off. Oops, I didn't want that part. And they're not, so this is what you end up with. I'm going to toss that. Uh, this part is not great. Just by itself, it looks like this. Because these came from Dollar Tree. <laughs> so what do you expect? But you can stack them up and then really fill them in good. And they look pretty nice. So I have one piece right here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the center of that. And then I'm going to stick in another one of the pieces. And you could continue building layers as much as you want, but I'm just going to do two. Okay, so let's do that. And then um, different of the floral little picks that you can get at Dollar Tree, some of them have two layers on them, like this sweet little pink flower. But I don't want the plastic because I won't be able to, that they're sitting on, I won't be able to get it to lay flat. So I'm just going to pull the whole thing off. Put a little dab of glue in the center and glue the two pieces together. I mean, this is it. It takes no time at all. Oh, and be prepared because you're going to have glue strings galore. Um, and you're, 
if you're gonna be putting your fingers almost directly on the hot glue, then I recommend that you use a low temperature hot glue. This is my favorite. It's called a Sure Bonder Cool Shot. I should buy for this company because I promote it all the time, but you can get it at pretty much any craft store. Um, I usually pick mine up when I'm at Walmart craft section uh, for under $10. And I do actually use their sticks, their glue sticks. Um, they also have fabric glue, glue, glue sticks that you can use that um, they're nice. They're great for a fabric thing that you would want to wash. They're a little bit more expensive, so if it's something like this banner that we're going to be gluing flowers onto, I wouldn't um, use the more expensive actual fabric glue for that because I'm, I'm not going to ever wash it. I would just use the regular. Let's see, do I have a bag? Yeah. And the more you buy at a time, the less expensive they are. So this is a sure bonder. It was 100 I don't remember how much it costs, but it's just the regular. And then this is what the Sherbonder fabric sticks look like. Um, they do come in different colors. There's a black, and I believe there's a clear. This is kind of a creamy ivory color. So we're just using your the basic kind of glue sticks for this project. All right, so I have been working here this morning and I have made a whole bunch of flowers and um, like I told you at the start I did my leaves to cover I'll show you on this one there are five leaves on the bottom and I just cut the leaves small and laid them on there and then I started towards the outside and I'm working in, and I did the outsides so that each side is symmetrical. But this is one of those personal preference things. Well, hi, M Migdalia, how are you? Hey, Marianne, hi, Jamie. Um, do, it, do it how you like, but I started symmetrical on the outside, and then I'm gonna do pops of color throughout the rest of it. And if you uh, don't like these bright colors, or you don't like Dollar Tree flowers. I mean, they're not great, but they look decent in this application. Then use what you like. This would be pretty to do a whole thing of flowers all in one color. Um, and I was thinking about painting this, but then in the middle of the night last night, I started remembering, let me grab this, this project that I did, gosh, at least two years ago. And it was on a, uh, um, like a, a blackboard type surface and it said bloom where you're planted and then I had this little pouch with these flowers that was glued onto the um, blackboard on one side and I was thinking about these little flowers and that they're about the perfect size for this project and uh, I just decided to do the actual flowers instead but I never throw anything away so when I take projects apart I hang on to the bits and pieces because you never know when you want to use them again okay let's get creative here and start throwing in some colors I do some pink right at the very center. And I'm pushing my flowers right up next to each other so that they're pretty ruffled, if that makes sense. Because I don't want them to look flat. And let's do, let's do a couple of these. These are Dollar Tree also. They look like this. Um, I think they say that they're, <sighs> They're supposed to be lilacs, and there's two colors of them. They don't look like lilacs to me, but anyways, when you pull them off, I can pull it off, they aren't great looking, but you can stack a couple of them up, and you can get something that's much 
better and I wanted a variety of colors so let's pop a couple of these in this is one of those projects where I feel like I've made something whoops out of almost nothing because I had all these Dollar Tree flowers just floating around doing nothing and um, Okay, and then let's pop in some yellow highlights around that. My sister, Nanette, is the one in our family that got the floral abilities, not me. She is always making the most gorgeous wreaths. I grew up in a family that was crafting all the time. Did you? Um, I remember when toll painting was a big deal. Do you guys remember that fad? I did that. I did rug hooking when I was a little girl. Of course, we did lots of the paint by number stuff. Sometimes these just don't want to come apart. Um, so, anyways, she's always made wreaths. And I've done everything else. I grew up sewing. Who grew up sewing or crocheting or um, making Barbie clothes or baby doll clothes? Uh, I learned how to knit when I was a little girl. Um, anyways, I think we all have our own gifts and I talked about that last week on Christ and Crafting when we talked about how we are made in God's image and God is the ultimate creator. And he, um, he spoke the universe into existence, you know. And so, uh, he gives each one of us different talents, um, desires, skills, all that kind of stuff. And that was the subject last week for Christ and Crafting. And I have a few of the same Bible verses pulled out for today. Macrame, I did that too. In fact, my stepmother was here. My father is deceased, but when he was alive, um, he had a wonderful wife named Donna, and she was here visiting us just recently, and she inspired me to try my hand out at a little bit of macrame, and I made these keychains. It just sort of comes back to you once you start playing with it. So I did, I did a lot of that for my little girl. Um, okay, so I'm just continuing to build here. And other than the outsides having a pattern, I don't really have a pattern for anything else here. I'm just kind of cramming them in where I can get them in. And I'm trying to cover up all of the um, all of the black ink that was the stencil design. I'll lift it up in just a second and show you where we are right now. We are covered <laughs> in glue strings. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is where I am so far. And it's going to be so pretty. Um, so I was thinking, what would you do with something like this? Well, uh, I don't know what your familial situation is, but if you have a teen or a granddaughter who's a teenager, or even a young tween or a younger girl, or boy too, um, that is about the age when, when I really started to struggle with 
what do I look like? What am I supposed to look like? What is, you know, all that kind of horrible stuff that we go through as teens. And I was thinking this would be something great to hang in a teen or tween's uh, area where they get ready in the morning, just as a reminder. And then of course I would talk to them about what it means, which I'll talk to you in a minute, to be fearfully and wonderfully made and it could just be, I think, it could be a good reminder of that, that um, God doesn't make any junk. He really doesn't. And uh, that we are all designed on purpose for uh, specific reasons with specific qualities and everything. And so for that age and state, the older I get, the less I care you know, about all those things that used to just really get me upset. Being too heavy, being whatever, too whatever, or not enough of whatever. Um, so I think this would be great for that. Um, it would be great for a baby's room. Uh, I think it would be adorable for a baby's room. And I think it would be pretty in my bathroom. I could use one of those little teeny command adhesive hooks and I could hang it on something like that, even on my mirror, as a reminder to myself. Although the older I get, the less the less I compare myself with other people and the more I just trust that, that God is good and he doesn't make any junk and um, yeah, I'm not a mistake. There's nothing uh, wrong. God didn't do anything wrong when he was creating us. Okay, I think it's pretty full. I want to show you what it looks like. Of course, I always do this. Of course, I'll come back after I'm done and I'll fiddle around with it some more. But look how pretty that is. Next time I did this, I would be a little bit more careful not to have my flowers go up so high that they almost cover up the Psalm 139 verse 14. So I might tack those down a little better. But let me show you what this looks like. And these, um, these surfaces, these soft surfaces that you can get from magnoliadiy.com, they are super affordable and they're really nice quality. So I will include some links at the very end, but if you want links for anything, just tell me. Isn't it pretty and different? And of course you could, I mean, you could put a pretty bow up here. You could do some more flowers up here, but I almost think that simpler is better for this project. What do you guys think? Okay, I'm going to clear out a little bit of room for myself and grab my Bible. And let's look at that verse. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's look at that. Let's talk about all of that. Um, I have some other Bible verses to go into as well. Oh, I wanted to show you this real quick. This is another size of the, um, the little pennant banner. It needs to be ironed, but these are great. And you could use a smaller design on this and have something really cute. And it could hang on a door. It could hang on a, a handle of a door. It could hang on a cabinet. I mean, there's lots of things that you can do with that. So those are great. I don't know if you're like me, but in order to think straight and have my thoughts be somewhat organized, I need to have the space that I'm in feel 
somewhat organized. So let me just quickly throw all this stuff aside. My Bible. Hey, did you guys see these projects? This turned out so cute. I'm so happy with it. It's on an embroidery hoop. And this is Painter's Drop Cloth. I did that this week. I also did this one this week using some vintage buttons. Turned out awesome. All these videos are here on DIY Dreaming. If you would like to go back and look at anything, we also did this, which was different. These are aquarium pebbles. And this is watercolor paper. So I just got a few things out to show you. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to turn off the ring light because, oh my goodness, it gets so hot. And I'm going to bring you a little bit closer. Hopefully we're not falling over crooked, but okay. So uh, it was so cool how God oops, put everything together for me like he always does where I start out earlier in the week thinking about what I want to talk about and sometimes that's what it ends up being and other times it's just completely different. Um, like I had a different project for the craft in mind for this. We were going to paint and in the middle of the night God just gave me this idea and I thought yeah that's different let's let's go with that and it's the same with the message it um, it's just so cool how God can speak to us if we're listening um, anyways if you've not watched Christ in crafting before let me tell you what I usually do I usually pray uh, for just a couple minutes, and then we go into the Bible. I tell you some verses, some thoughts, some things that God has laid on my heart, and then I pray and we're done. And um, if this message for this week, if you are at all experiencing self-esteem issues or insecurities or anything like that, or wondering what in the world am I doing here? Why am I here? What's this all about? This could be a good message for you. So, we are going to talk about Psalm 139, verse 14, which is this verse. And we're going to go into what fearfully and wonderfully made means. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the care and concern that you, you used when you made each one of us separate and distinct, no one like the other. Um, it's impossible for us to understand how, how that could even be, but I just thank you for that. And I pray, Lord, as we um, look at some different verses in your word, that they will speak to the people who are watching. I thank you for them. Uh, please give me the right words and the right ideas that you want me to convey and, um, and just be with us. And I praise you, Lord, and I thank you for this time. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's look at that verse in Psalm 139, which is a great chapter of the Bible. Okay, I'm going to start reading at verse 13. And um, I want to show you some of the notes that are in my Bible. And I want to talk to you also about getting a Bible. Because that's one of my, that's really one of my goals in doing Christ and Crafting, is to, um, to show people how wonderful it is to be able to have God's Word in your hands in a paper Bible that you can write your life in and just what a difference that makes. So um, I have a new international version life application Bible. It's around 20 years old. It's not fancy, but I have been writing my life in it. And this is the most precious 
actual possession that I own. Um, it's the only thing I would run back into the house to retrieve if it, if it was on fire. Because, not just because it's God's word, but also because it has my life and how God has spoken to me over the years recorded in it. So, I just want to show you an example. And if you are interested, if you don't have a paper Bible, the life application study ones are great because they have awesome notes that help everything make more sense. And I can give you a link to a place where you can order a life application study Bible in whatever um, translation speaks most clearly to you. They even have large print. And I don't have anything to do with this. I don't get paid for this or anything. Uh, my only interest is just that I want you to have God's Word in your hands. So you can see around this verse that we're going to talk about over the years, I have scribbled all kinds of different things. And um, so the verse starts and it says, For you, referring to God, created my inmost being. I say this all the time. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before, the, before one of them came to be. That was um, Psalm 139, 13 through 16. And that's a good verse to come back to after you watch this. So in my notes here, I just scribbled a, a few things. I scribbled that we are not an accident. God knit us together. He has a plan for us. Every person is equally special to God. And then I wrote this note to myself. So I need to reach out to the lost because every person is equally special to God. And I wrote, you made me. Um, and the notes here say, God's character goes into the creation of every person. When you feel worthless or begin to hate yourself, remember that God's spirit is ready and willing to work within you. We should have as much respect for ourselves as the maker God has for us. Um, so, I started to tell you guys that as a teenager, I really struggled with my self-worth, my self-esteem, probably just exactly like you did. And um, there was always somebody who had a better nose, a better figure, a better smile, who was better at this or that, who was cuter, taller, shorter, you know, whatever. There was always someone better, and I frequently felt less than. Um, so, as an adult, as an older adult lady, it's interesting how that's kind of turned around for me, and I can see that in younger people. Um, I mean, of course, I do still struggle with certain things in my life that I feel lesser than about, but um, I think it's interesting that God laid this verse and this project on my heart this week right after last week's message, which was about how we are all made in God's image and God is the ultimate creator. And that is where that creativity that I believe we all have in us comes from. Um, it comes from God and we're made in God's image. And that's one of the verses I want to share with you today. Um, so our gifts and talents are all different, just like each one of us are different. But we are made in God's image, and God doesn't make any junk. Okay, so today I hope this will be an encouragement, and um, let's talk about what they're actually saying in verse 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. What is that saying? I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, to me, and I think a lot of you would agree, 
it is not saying that I was created by some cosmic accident or by happenstance or by evolution. I was not created just over time, starting out as a single cell whatever and evolving to the person, the human that I am. I don't believe any of that is true. Um, we're not random groups of cells. We are created. Uh, God knit us together in our mother's wombs and we are fearfully and wonderfully made because we're made by God. So what does that mean? That means that we're, we're individually handcrafted um, by a loving God. We are created on purpose. We're created with specific purposes. And you guys, we matter to God. He made us. He picked out different characteristics and things for us. And he cares about us. He cares about us so much that he, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. He wants, we are created to be in relationship with him now and after. Um, and I think it's really wonderful to think about the fact that no other person today, tomorrow, or yesterday is exactly the same. We are all different and our bodies are so intricate. Um, if you look, if you look at DNA, or you look at the different things that have to happen in your cells, or the different things that have to happen to be able to sustain life on Earth, um, it's just impossible to say that we are made by happenstance or cosmic accident or, or we're just random evolutionary creatures. I just think that's ridiculous to say any of those things, if you look. And this reminds me of um, my older son was always a science lover. And when I was young, I was never great at science or math. I'm still not great with either one of those things. But he is. He got it from his father. And I would help him. I miss those days. I would help him study for some of his different science tests. And I would read his notes to him and he would... I'd say, what is a, you know, whatever that he had in his notes, and he would explain that helped him study. And he was the kind of a student that liked to do drawings of different aspects of the human body of cells, of all kinds of different things. And, you know, when people, I'm just going to get off topic for a second and tell you my thought. Of course, I want you to check it with God's Word and the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to just believe me because I'm crafting <laughs> and telling you my own thoughts, you know. Find out for yourself if you believe this too. But people would say that when you look at science, that it proves that, that God does not exist. That science proves that we are a, we are, a product of evolution, of time plus matter. And that, if, when you look at science, when you look at the human body, that could not be further from the truth, if you ask me. So um, our bodies are so intricate, and if you look at the DNA, to think about the fact that no other person living now, in the future, or in the past has exactly the same everything that you have, it just points to a intelligent creator, our Heavenly Father. Um, so what does fearfully made? Have you ever sat down and looked at this verse? I mean, it's kind of phrased a little different. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. What is that fearfully made? Well, when you think of fear, you think of being afraid or scared. But that is not what it means at all. It means that God made us with great reverence, with heartfelt intent, 
and with respect. Uh, it doesn't mean anything about being afraid. It just tells you the, the attitude of our creator in making each one of us. And we are wonderfully made as well, which just means marvelously made, created distinct, unique, and set apart. I think that's so cool, those two things. Um, so when I'm starting to think, you know, I'm less than whatever, um, then I need to re be reminded that God chose that particular whatever it is for me for a reason, and he's good. And maybe I don't like everything, <laughs> because I'm a human with a, a thinker and a willer. Um, maybe I don't love every aspect of the different things that God selected for me, but I do have to respect who selected those, God, and that he knows better, and he is good. Um, so let's go now to Ephesians. I have to mark all my verses so I be prepared today. Ephesians 2.10. And it says... Let's back up to nine because this is attached to a verse that's pretty well known. And it says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. We're, we don't get saved by what we do. We get saved by God's gift, what he did for us, and our, our willingness to accept that gift. Then the next phrase says, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. There is a plan. It's not an accident. Everything that we say or do should be with the ultimate result, whether we're, we're, it's intentional or not, to glorify our creator. So we are God's masterpiece, and God does not make mistakes. The other verse is the one we looked at last week in Genesis, um, chapter 1, verse 26. Um, and it's so funny, you guys. God is so good. I just started my summer Bible study on Tuesday nights, and this first week we were looking about the creation, about creation and how the, the study I'm doing is a Lisa Turkhurst study. And there's another guy with her that helped her author it. I can't think of what his name is. But it's called Finding Jesus in the Old Testament. Because we kind of think, you know, here's God's story in the Old Testament, and then boom, halfway through, Jesus appears on the scene. But that's not how it is at all. He was and is and is to come. And he was present, Jesus in creation. So this, that was the, the start of that. And we had just talked about that in Christ and Crafting on Sunday. And then on Tuesday, it came here. And then I'm talking about it again today. I'm like, okay, God, there's something bigger here that you're still wanting me to see. Okay, so Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 says, this is after everything's been created, you know, the earth and the sky and the lights in the sky and the living creatures and the land and all that. Then God said, let us, this is what was being pointed out to me, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures, creatures that move along the ground. So this is telling us that they, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, created man. In, it says our and us, uh, let us make man in our image. We're made in God's image by the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And um, it's just so cool how everything goes together when you can look at the big picture of things. Um, so I wanted to share that, that 
We're God's masterpiece. We're made in God's image. We are created for him. And let's go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. And this is where it says, this is talking about the supremacy of Christ. Uh, for by him, Jesus, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him, Jesus, and for him, Jesus. Jesus, he, is before all things. And in all things, and excuse me, and in him, Jesus, all things hold together. So that's Colossians chapter 1, and I actually read to you verses 16 and 17. We're, made, we're God's masterpiece, made in his image, created for him. He, he created us, he holds everything together, and we are created for him. And then let's look at Isaiah, because this is, oh, this is such a beautiful concept. Uh, I love, I love the visual of this. Okay, it's Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. And it says, yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Isn't that amazing to think of us almost as a lump of clay that is formed and fashioned uh, by God's hands? We are. We totally are. So all of this just to say that the next time we can start to think that we're less than or that it's not right, that you should have been taller, shorter, thinner, stronger, smarter, more beautiful, you know, whatever it is, that we need to remember that we were created. We're not a cosmic accident by a creator who loves us, not through just evolution and cells lumping together over time. We are created in God's image and distinct, unique, and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So that's you, friends, and it's me too. And if you have, especially a younger person in your life that's struggling with some of that, I wish my own mother would have talked to me about this when I was younger. Um, because I always felt like there was something wrong, that I wasn't what I wished I was or, or should be. But if you have somebody, a younger person in your life, that you sense that that's, they're thinking some of these thoughts, why, I would encourage you to talk to them about these verses, and I'll write them down and put them in a, a separate post so you can find, up, find them easy. Um, and consider making something like this, whether you make a pillow or a t-shirt or a tote bag or something that they would see frequently um, for them as a visual reminder. And I think this would be especially helpful for a young person, a teen, a tween, a young adult to be hanging in that area where they get ready every day, where you can be looking at yourself in the mirror and thinking, oh, this just isn't right. I'm, I'm just, I'm all wrong. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Let me pray it out. And um, then I'll get all those Bible verses together. And I'll post those on um, DIY Dreaming as well as here in the comments. Um, I'll also get pictures of this project up close may fiddle around with it just a little bit before I do that, but I hope you liked it. Let me know if you want a link to this stencil or the ink or these surfaces that I showed you. All of my flowers, in case you missed the beginning, are from Dollar Tree. They're all about the same scale. That's the only important thing. And then there are a huge variety of colors. But you can use any florals that you like, whatever it feels to you. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this 
this time. Thank you, Lord, for the care and reverence that you took in making each one of us unique from everyone else in all of time. And that is so hard to understand how you could do that. How, how you could work all those details out within our bodies and with our personalities and emotions and how we think and feel and how you can make us all so distinct. It's just, it's just amazing. So Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you that I know, and I pray that these people know as well, that I'm not just a product of evolution, that I was um, created for a purpose and for a relationship with you, Lord, now and in the future. And for the people out there that don't know you, Lord, um, I pray that this, this time, this craft, maybe will be an encouragement for them to find someone in their life that they can talk to. Someone who is a solid Christ follower. That they can ask those hard questions of, um, Lord, if they don't have your word in their hands, I pray that they will get one. And get it in a translation that they can understand. And that they'll put some time and energy into getting to know you. Because life is different. It's still hard. We live in a fallen, broken world full of sin and we're sinners. But I can't imagine going through this life now or in eternity without you. And I just want that for everyone. So, Lord, um... I just lift this message, this idea to you. Um, there are a lot of people out there that are going through difficult things, um, through heartbreaks and disappointments and physical struggles and bodily ailments and, you know, all kinds of stuff that I don't know about, but you do. So this week, Lord, I just pray that you will... You're, you are there. You are holding these people in their arms. It's not you, but Lord, help these people to feel your presence. It's not you that strays, it's us. Help these people to know that you love them, that you have a good plan for them, that you haven't abandoned them, that you're there, that you love them. Help them to feel that this week. And so I just lift up all of those prayer requests and concerns to you. And um, I just love you, Lord. Thank you so much for giving me the unique interest in crafting and then giving me courage little by little to start talking about my faith, to start crafting with my faith in mind, start reading your word on Facebook and YouTube, and then to start talking about it and praying and all of that. I just... It's the greatest honor and blessing in my whole life, so I thank you for that, Lord. And um, I just lift all of this up to you in your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Well, I don't know if this has been long or short, but I thank you for joining me. Um, I hope that it was an encouragement, or it at least got you thinking about your worth. Because we're not worthy because of anything necessarily about ourselves. We're worthy because of who our creator is. Um, anyways, I hope to see you again next Sunday. And I would love to see you every day this upcoming week here at DIY Dreaming. The craft projects that I typically do here are going to be things that are faith, family, or flowers focused, and sometimes seashells with vintage buttons. Um, they're going to be quick and easy. They're going to be sometimes a little different, like crafting with aquarium pebbles. Um, but they're going to be affordable, they're going to be quick, and I, I think that they're um, uplifting. So 
Uh, I hope to see you again this week and next and next and next. If you haven't clicked on these three dots up here if you're watching on Facebook and you have not liked or followed DIY Dreaming yet, I encourage you to do that. You can also turn on your notifications so that Facebook will notify you when I go live. Um, if you do a this or a this or say something to me in the comments, that does seem slightly to increase the chances that Facebook will show you what I have coming up. So I would encourage you to do that. And let me know if you have any questions about anything that we did or that I talked about today. Feel free to sprinkle. And I hope that you have a blessed and wonderful day. Bye, everyone.